It's been a good week to hide away bad news, but not on my watch. Spread this one far and wide, folks. Professor Mark Woolhouse, a leading virus expert who advised the government during the COVID pandemic. Do you remember the pandemic? Those were the days. Well, he has slammed the three national lockdowns as a failure of public health policy. For this, I'm happy to award him tonight's no shit Sherlock Award. But at least he's being honest. Woolhouse, clearly no sheep. He said the decision to shut the country down, which saw the borrowing of half a trillion pounds, the collapse of thousands of businesses, kids kept out of school, and the creation of a waiting list of 7.6 million people in the NHS was disproportionate, unsustainable, and here's the kicker, not as effective as was being claimed. So whilst people who worried about the impact of this Chinese Communist Party-inspired experiment to stop a virus were labelled right-wing, COVID deniers or granny killers, in fact, they've been proved right. Woolhouse told the COVID inquiry, which I fear is going to be a bigger stitch-up than a property deal with Donald Trump, that alternatives to lockdown were not developed and delivered with sufficient urgency in 2020. You can say that again. He told them he couldn't find any good analysis that showed stay-at-home orders made a difference. He also said that this draconian, draconian economy-destroying policy should have been a last resort. Except, of course, it wasn't, with politicians and government scientists waving their willies around and becoming national rock stars with this insane decision to tell healthy people not to leave the house. Woolhouse said he became very, very frustrated with SAGE and that if there had been a separate scientific committee gathering evidence on the harms of lockdowns, it could have influenced decisions. We said it at the time, but we were the bad people, remember? Meanwhile, last month, the UK Health Security Agency, who I think we can agree are not a bunch of swivel-eyed nutjob conspiracy theorists tweeting from their mother's bedroom, quietly released a review which found that the evidence base for the effectiveness of social distancing, masking and lockdowns was weak. I can't believe it. Even those border restrictions which impacted businesses and families look to have failed. Now, I'm angry about this, and here's why you should be too. Because most of our current problems are down to this failed policy. The constraints on the government to spend money on our health service, schools and policing is down to this failed policy. Inflation, the eye-watering national debt, the cost of living and higher interest rates are down to this failed policy. Damaged kids, a legacy of domestic abuse, a mental health tsunami, crumbling public services, an NHS waiting list longer than a night out with Keith Richards. It's all down to this failed policy. A work-shy nation with productivity through the floor is down to this failed policy. As civil servants and public sector employees insist on working from home where they can do Zoom meetings in their pyjamas, catch up on missed episodes of Loose Women and crack open their first bottle of San Miguel at four in the afternoon as they peruse their final emails of the day. Scientists who had precious little evidence to justify this wild experiment took control of the country and smashed it into a brick wall. When future generations look at what we were dealing with, a potentially nasty but predominantly mild seasonal respiratory virus, and one non-fatal to most, they'll have just one question. What the hell were we thinking? Never again.